this morning, not only just uh, online uh, via Facebook, but we're so glad to have you all on via our conference call. As the Lord has blessed us to gather once again uh, to go over our Partaker's Pathway Bible study, we are indeed grateful uh, for all of you who have decided to tune in. We pray uh, that as a result of these series of teachings, that God will bless you, that he will strengthen your faith, that he will grow you in the things of God, especially in a time like this when the only thing that works for us during this pandemic is the word of God. So we're, we're grateful. We're grateful for those who are here uh, with us. We are well within the legal numbers. Amen. <laughs> it's a few of us, but we can still fight if something went down. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and get started again for those who are watching via Facebook Live, those of you who are on the conference call. We thank and praise God for you, those who are here with me. We thank and praise God for your presence and participation. Yeah, I was glad when they said unto me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let us go into the virtual house of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we, it's good to, uh, to have you all here and know that we're continuing to lift you all up and pray. pray. Let us go to God in prayer before we begin. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we love you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We praise your holy and most righteous name. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the capacity to move and go about our lives, knowing that in you we live, move, and have our being. God, we it was you who woke us up this morning, and we're so grateful for that. With the number of lives that are succumbing to this virus and other illnesses, God, your grace and mercy saw fit to let us wake up to see another day. And for that, we are glad and we are grateful. Amen. God, we thank you for every form of provision, every form of protection, every form of peace, power, yeah. prosperity, and even pleasure according to your divine purpose. Yeah. God, I lift up everyone who's watching via Facebook, who's on this conference call, and those here with me, God, not only them, but those who call upon your name. We thank you for salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, and all the benefits and blessings that are due us because we've made the choice to say yes to Jesus. Yes. God, we ask further in the name of Jesus that you would forgive us of our sins, that you're creating us clean hearts, O oh God, renewing us a right spirit, that we can continue doing your holy and righteous will. And now, God, we turn it over to you. We ask, God, that you would arrest all flesh and that you would allow the real teacher, the Holy Spirit, to rise and minister to us. God, we lay every sin uh, at your feet, every transgression, every iniquity, everything that we've done or didn't do that pulled us outside of your will. Sins of omission and commission, as Sister Glover says, we ask you, forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us again. Create in us clean hearts. Renew a right spirit within us that we can continue doing your holy and righteous will. Now minister to us as we all tune in to hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Give your servant the strength and ability and wisdom to do it the way you want it done. And we'll always be mindful under every circumstance as you heal, save, deliver, and set free. Yeah. As you move about this world being only the God that you can be yeah. in all of our individual and collective circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We are in the second installment of our Bible Faith Study course, How Faith Comes, Part 2. Amen. amen. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about human faith versus Bible faith. Before we get into it, I want you to go with me to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and the first verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you got it, say hallelujah. Type hallelujah. But just get to it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Again, we welcome everybody who's here. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you all participating in our morning Bible study. Amen. We got it? Let's read it together. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God is telling us exactly what Bible faith is. Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is the evidence 
of things not seen and that faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, the lesson teaches us that faith is substance. Moffat's translation of Hebrews 11 and 1 reads, Now faith means that we are confident of what we hope for, convinced of what we do not see. Another translation reads, Faith is giving substance to things hoped for. Amen. Now as it relates to human faith versus Bible faith, there is a stark difference. Each of us have human faith that we operate in, sometimes even unbeknownst to us. That chair you're sitting in, that couch you're relaxing on, that comfortable bed that you may be lying in even now. I promise that before you sat on it or laid down on it, you did not check to see who the manufacturer was. Amen. You did not study or Google the weight capacity. You just jumped right in because human faith said that this chair, this couch, or this bed is going to hold me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That, that book, when, whenever you dare to try to cook a new meal, to try something new, you don't know how it's going to turn out. But you have the faith that leads you to participate in the exercises is hopefully going to lead to a good meal. But even if it's nasty, you still exercise faith, human faith, in order to put it together. Amen. Amen. Rarely do any of us go into the kitchen, kitchen praying, God, let it turn out all right. <laughs> That's why we taste it every two minutes, just to see how we're progressing. So there's human faith versus Bible faith. Amen. Amen. It says, however, we must understand that there are a number of kinds of faith. Mm -hmm. For example, everyone has natural human faith, whether they are saved or unsaved. We just gave a couple of examples. But in Hebrews 11 and 1, God is talking about scriptural faith, a Bible faith. Bible faith is believing with your heart. There's a vast difference between believing with your heart and just believing what your physical senses may tell you. Bible faith is laying hold of the unseen realm in hopes, I'm sorry, of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'll say it again. Bible faith is laying hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. And Bible faith grows out of the word of God. Amen. Another translation of Hebrew 1, 11 and 1 says, Faith is the warranty deed. The thing for which you have fondly hoped for is at last yours. Hallelujah. For example, you hope for finances to meet the obligations you have to pay. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. And some of us still wait on our stimulus checks. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith <laughs> gives you the assurance that you'll have the money when you need it yes. because faith is the evidence of things not seen. Yes. Your hope for physical strength to do the work you know you must do or you hope for physical strength to do the work you know you must do. But faith says, according to Psalm 27 and 1, this is what faith is speaking. Thank you. Speak faith today, Holy Spirit. Amen. When you got Psalm 27 and 1, say hallelujah, type hallelujah, and I'll catch up with you in a minute because I ain't got it yet. Okay, now I got it. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalm 27 and 1. Let's read together. The Lord, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's all right. I want to hear him talk back today. That's why. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all read it out loud too so Pastor can hear you. Amen. It says, faith will say about itself everything that the word says. For, listen, for faith in God is faith in his word. Amen. <laughs> It would be a wonderful thing if folk would learn that and act upon that. 
then you see the very strength of God and every blessing he has made available to them would become theirs. Amen. That we got to go with what the Bible says because when we open our Bibles, God opens his mouth. Amen. When we read the Bible, God is speaking to us. Amen. And there's a power that comes attached with the faith that gives us what we need in order to be able to carry out God's will. Human faith versus Bible faith. But then there's also appropriating God's strength by faith. He tells the story, the writer, I learned what faith is when I was raised up from the bed of sickness. He says, after I was healed, I needed work, but this was during the depression days and it was hard to find work. He says, I had been bed fast for 16 months and I needed clothes and other things for school. He says, I got a job at a nursery pulling up peach trees. We pulled up these trees by hand one boy on each side of the tree. We had to pull them up for orders that had come in. He says, I want you to know that was work. Mm -hmm. It was especially hard for someone who had been bed fast for so long and who had only been up out of the bed for a few months. We would meet each other, I'm sorry, we would meet each morning before sun up and begin work. Every day, some of the boys would say to me, well, I didn't think you would make it today. You know, so-and-so fell out yesterday, and he had to quit. <laughs> I didn't believe in trying to push something off on someone, but I did believe in witnessing for God. So when they would say these things to me, it would give me an opportunity to witness to them about the Lord. Good God Almighty. You talk about taking advantage of an opportunity to minister faith. I would say, well, boys, if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here. You see, his strength is my strength. Amen. The Bible reminds us again, Psalm 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. My life consists of the physical as well as the spiritual. And the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid? When I would say that, it would make some of those boys so mad that they would cuss about it. <laughs> I would just smile and say, praise the Lord. I'll be here tomorrow and every other day because the Lord is my strength. Amen. Of course, if I had gone by my feelings, help us Lord, I would have never gotten out of bed because I felt like staying in bed. I never felt so weak in my life. I felt like I couldn't do anything, let alone a strenuous job like that. But I just stayed with it. I acted upon the word because I knew what faith is. Amen. So I would say to the Father, to Jesus, to the Holy Ghost, to the devil, to myself, <laughs> and to those boys if they asked me, the answer would be the same. The Lord is my strength. Then after I prayed and asked God for his strength and confessed that I had it, I would never get any help or strength until I actually started to work. Good God Almighty. Amen. You see, it wasn't enough to have faith. He says I had to act on my faith. This is where many people miss what faith is. They want to get what they are believing God for and then believe they have received it. But actually, it's the other way around. You have to believe you have your petition, and then you get it. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Right. So we could come to work, or we would come to work, and he says, I still wouldn't have any strength. But every morning when we started on the first tree, or sometimes the second tree, I would feel something hit me on the top of my head and it would go through my body out of the ends of my fingers and out of the ends of my toes. It was like supernatural strength of the Lord. And I would work all day long under the power of that strength. Finally, one fellow who weighed 250 pounds said, I'll tell you, when this old 250 pounds is gone, there won't be one man left in the field. I replied, why Alton? God weighs more than 250 pounds. When you fall out and quit, 
I'll still be here. He cussed at me. <laughs> but at 3 o'clock that afternoon, he fell out. <laughs> and it was the truth. I was the only man left. I was the weakest and the skinniest, but I was the only man left of the original bunch that started. And to show you how sufficient the Lord's strength was, the boss wanted to hire me permanently, so I proved God's word, he says, by holding on to faith in the word of God. Amen. How do we prove God's word? Is it just by sitting here studying it? Is it just by reading it? Help me, Sister Glover. You got to put the word into action. Proving God's word by acting on it. It's not enough to just say it and quote it and memorize it. What are you doing with it? Are you, is your faith unemployed? Is your faith waiting on the stimulus check? <laughs> Or are you putting your faith to work to produce the promises of God? Amen. Is your faith lazy? Is your faith circumstantial? Because you'll believe God for a check, but you won't believe him for a cure. You'll believe God for a mate, but you won't believe God to help you mentally. Faith works all the time when you work the faith. All the time. So we prove God's word not by shouting and screaming and crying, speaking in other tongues, going to church, saying you better preach, preacher. But we prove it by acting on it. Yes. You can hear it all day long. Yes. And if you don't do nothing with it, yes. nothing will get done. Amen. You may say that you know God's word is good, but you will never really know God's word is good until you have acted on it and have reaped the results of it. Yes. This is what faith is. Faith is proving God's word by acting on it. It's proving the legitimacy, the power of God's word by taking it and working it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Faith is giving substance to the things hoped for. Mm -hmm. Now he says again, he says, I went to work in spite of my physical weakness. I acted on God's word, and I reaped the results of my faith in God's word. Mm -hmm. You see, I hoped for physical strength to do the work that I knew must be done. But faith gave substance to that which I hoped for. God's word says that God is the strength of my life. Mm -hmm. As I acted on God's word, my faith gave substance to that which I hoped for which was strength to get my work done. You see, a lot of folk just hope and they stop right there. But that is not faith, that's hope. And hope will not bring substance. Amen. Only faith will. Yes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope doesn't have any substance, but faith gives substance to hope. Amen. 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 Someone might say, well, I hope God heard my prayer. But if that is all you are doing is hoping, you won't receive an answer to your petition because it is faith that moves God, not hope. Amen. Hope isn't what causes God to hear your prayer. Faith is what causes God to hear your prayer. Amen. If you're only hoping, there will not be an answer to your prayers. Yes. However, your faith, good God Almighty, I'm getting happy in Bible study. Your faith can give substance to your hope. In fact, faith will give answers to your prayers. Hallelujah. Remember, hope says, I will have the answer to my petition sometimes. But faith says, I have the answer to my petition now. Amen. 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 Evidence of things not seen. John Wesley said that the devil has given the church a substitute for faith that looks like and sounds so much like faith. Many people can't tell the difference. He calls it mental assent. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Positive thinking. <laughs> but that ain't faith. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's break this down. Let's talk about mental assent versus heart faith. Because nowhere in scripture does the Bible tell us to have mental faith. Amen. Mental assent. But we're going to find out a whole lot about where our hearts are as it relates to faith. And Sister Regina, our heart gets involved only as it benefits us personally. This is why we can, we can have faith with all our heart to believe God for increase but can't have that same faith in our heart to tithe off the increase. Mental assent. <laughs> Y'all may as well go on and type in amen or say amen. For example, many people see what God's word says and they agree mentally that God's word is true. But they are just agreeing with their minds. But mental agreement with the word is not what gets the job done. It is heart faith that receives from God. Everybody say heart faith. Heart Type heart in faith. heart faith. Heart faith. Heart Amen. Heart now go with me to Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Hallelujah. When you got to say hallelujah, type hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Yes. I pray this is blessing somebody so far, and it's just getting started. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't even feel my baby toe no more that I, I stubbed it yesterday, and it made me say some words that only Deacon Ellis would say. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm teaching, Sister Manny, I ain't even feeling that pain. <laughs> hey. God, to cover your baby toe. <laughs> we have Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. Listen to it. Let's read it. And let's, let's read it and take into consideration what it is saying. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with the heart man believeth. Jesus talked about believing with the heart. In Mark chapter 11, verse 20, what I have? Verse 23. Hallelujah. Go with me to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Hallelujah. When you have it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read it together. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt where in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Notice that the Bible never said one word about doubting in one's head. You can have doubt in your head and still have faith in your heart. But it is believing in your heart that will cause you to receive from God. People often ask, he says, how can I tell whether I have faith in my heart or whether I'm just believing mentally in my head? You can tell because mental agreement or mental assent says, <coughs> excuse me, that's not COVID. I was just choking on a little spit. Amen. Y'all be putting out the pastor Costco. I was like, he got the COVID. No, the devil is a lie. Amen. He says, <laughs> he says, you'll know because mental assent says, I know God's word is true. I know God's promise. I know God promises me healing and the answer to my prayer or whatever it is you need. But for some reason, I cannot get it. I cannot understand it. Why then don't I have the answer to my petition? Folk who say that are just in mental assent, not in real Bible faith or heart faith. Real faith in God's word says, if God's word says it's so, then it's so. Amen. The promise is mine. I have it now. Faith always says, I have it 
though I can't see it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Notice what the text says. Let's go back to Hebrews 11 and 1. Y'all going to memorize some of this scripture. That's why we're going to say it 7,000 times. So it can get all the way down in that inner sanctum. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Some said, well, yes, but the thing that I've been praying about, I don't see. It hasn't come to pass yet. But if you already had it, you wouldn't have to believe it. You wouldn't know it then. Amen? Amen. In order to come to that place of knowing, you have to take that step of believing without seeing. Amen. Based only on your faith in the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. You got to see it before you see it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Many people want to know it first. And then believe it. Yeah. That is, they want to know it from the natural standpoint of ha having it come to pass first. However, we know we have received what the word tells us is ours because God's word says it is ours. When we believe God's word without seeing anything manifested in the natural realm, then what we are believing God for materializes. Amen. Okay, Jesus said... In Mark chapter 11, Hallelujah. verse 24. Hallelujah. Let's go look at that. Hallelujah. Type hallelujah if you got it. Let's read together. Therefore, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye have received them, and ye shall have them. Believe ye received them, and ye shall have at whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Do you have it yet? You got to believe it first. Amen. Believe you already got it, and then you get it. Amen. Notice that having comes after believing. Most folk want to turn that around and have first, then believe. But in common everyday language, Jesus was saying that you have to believe you have your petition before you even get it. He says, I don't know about you, but I have never been able to receive healing for my body without first believing that I had received my healing. Amen. Even when every symptom in my body is crying out, you don't have your healing. You aren't healed. I would just simply say to my flesh, the Bible says yes. in Romans chapter 3 verse 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you get there, everybody, type hallelujah as I catch up with y'all. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. We got it? Hallelujah. Let's read together. God forbid, yea, let God be true. Every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightst be justified in thy saints and might overcome when thou art judged. He says, that when the symptoms try to speak louder than the Savior, you got to bring the Savior's voice. Let God be true. Amen. In every man, even if the man is the inner man. Mm. Yes. Uh, yes. Every man a liar. Yes. So if you say I'm not healed, you are a liar because God's word says I am healed. Amen. Then when I act in faith on God's word instead of acting on what I feel, yes. results are always forthcoming. Mm -hmm. It works 100 times out of 100. But if you're going to sit around and groan and sigh and gripe and complain and wait for something to come to you, you will never get very far in faith. That is real Bible faith. Amen. So... We got to get out of our feelings. Amen. Yeah. Go on and type it in. Go on and say it. I got to get out of my feelings and get into my faith. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I got to say it before I see it. Yeah. Then I'll see it before I see it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Faith. Hey. 
I could would run around, but I ain't got no faith in this tote. But if the Lord took me, run with that tote. But listen, next, believe what the Bible says, not what your senses tell you. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Because senses don't make sense. <laughs> And we've been throwing this word around a lot lately, common sense. Mm -hmm. But common sense always collides with faith. Mm -hmm. Faith overrules common sense. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Whenever we make decisions in our senses, chances are we always make the wrong decision. Amen. Because these senses, the flesh changes, our feelings change too often. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all still with your first love? Because feelings change. Amen. You ever felt so strong about something only to find out after you acted on your feelings that maybe it wasn't the right thing to do? Don't trust your senses. Trust God's word. Are you with me? Believe what the Bible says, not what your senses tell you. And, and please forgive me, those of you who are watching via Facebook Live and on the conference call. I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the class that you can go to our church website, which is partakerscb.org and download a copy of the... Uh, what is this thing called? The outline. Yeah, I was <laughs> thank you. Bible page. Yeah, uh, uh, a copy. You can get a, you can pull a copy of the outline. I am so sorry, but it's not too late because we just get into the good part. Uh, you can download a copy of the Bible study outline on our church website, partakers C like Charles, B like Boy, dot org. Amen. Amen. Believe what the Bible says, not what your senses tell you. If you are going to wait until you detect that every symptom has gone and your flesh corresponds with your faith and everything is fine before you are going to start believing God, then you're all out of order and out of line with the word and you'll never get very far in faith. You see, the trouble is that so many people are like doubting Thomas, one of Jesus' 12 disciples. Thomas said... Well, let's, let me let you read it for yourself so y'all won't think I'm lying on Jesus. When we look at John chapter 20, hallelujah. verse 25, hallelujah. when you get that type hallelujah, hallelujah, if you're on the conference call, say hallelujah. And if you're in the room, you done already said hallelujah because y'all done beat me there. John chapter 20, verse 25. All right, let's read it together. The other, the other disciple I therefore said unto him, we have, we have seen the Lord, but he also said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Then, <laughs> then when Jesus appeared to the disciples, and Thomas saw Jesus. Thomas said in verse 28. Hallelujah. 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 You got it? Let's read it together. And, and Thomas Hallelujah. answered and said unto him, my, my Lord, Lord and, and my, my God. God. Did Jesus praise Thomas for his lack of faith? No. Jesus said in verse 29. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read it. Jesus said unto him. Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they have believed. In other words, Thomas didn't believe in Jesus' resurrection by faith as you and I believe in it. Thomas believed because he saw Jesus with his physical eyes. He relied totally on his senses. But we believe in Jesus' resurrection because the word of God says... Jesus was raised from the dead early <laughs> one Sunday morning. Yeah. I just had to get that in because I'm Baptist and I like doing it and it makes me feel so much better. Amen. 
He got up, y'all. Yes. This is where many people miss it in the area of faith without realizing it. They say, I believe in divine healing because so-and-so got healed. But that's not Bible faith. I don't believe in healing because I saw someone else get healed. I believe in healing because the word of God says that healing belongs to me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And we got Bible proof. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Hallelujah. When you got it, shout hallelujah. Type hallelujah. I see you, Sister Belinda. Type it in. Thank you, Jesus. I just happened to glance down. We got it? Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Let's read it together. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are, right now present tense, are healed. But that's not the only one. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see you, Mary Duff. You put your hallelujah in there, too. I miss them hugs from you, but I'm going to make up for it when I see you. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Let's read together. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Amen. This is the arsenal that I take to the hospitals. Amen. Whenever I got to pray over somebody and anoint them with oil, I read these scriptures. But amen, because lots of times they contradict what I'm feeling. And you all been there. You feel like, and your senses tell you, oh, it don't look so good. <laughs> but y'all don't say that, especially if you're visiting somebody. <laughs> Want to get them some kind of hope. Don't go, don't go visit nobody in the hospital telling them, well, you know, my cousin died from that. I don't think you're going to make it. No, we are, we are people of faith. We don't roll like that. Amen. 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 First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, you got it? Amen. Let's read it together. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. It has already happened. He says, I don't believe in speaking in tongues just because some people speak in tongues. No, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says, with the evidence of speaking in tongues because the word of God teaches it. I would still believe in it. Even if I had never heard anyone else speak in tongues. But remember, as the Holy Spirit wills, we don't control the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is supposed to control us. If we controlled it, then who's really Lord? He says, I believe what the Bible says. Now what I see, and I'm sorry, not what I see in here. I believe what the Bible says, and he should have had feel. Not what I feel, not what I see, not what I hear. My faith is not in what I can see and hear. My faith is based on what God's word says. So as you see, when we develop our faith to the place where we believe what the word says, regardless of circumstances and physical symptoms, then we are believing the right thing. And that's what brings the right results. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a situation where the symptoms or the pains persisted and we found ourselves after a certain period of time slowly moving away from faith yes. and yes. quoting what we're feeling? Amen. Yeah. How you feel, girl? Oh, my back. My neck and my back. <laughs> Instead of confessing the word of God, we agree with how we feel. It will, child, you don't look so good where you know I ain't feeling that good. <laughs> Instead of speaking the word of God into our situation. We've all been there, but thank God we're growing in the word of God so that these things can change around for us. Amen. Thomas said, 
I will not believe until I see. And Jesus said, let's look at that John 20 and 29 again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, finding that scripture so quick. Bible experts. All right, I caught up with you. John 20 and 29, let's say it again. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they which have not seen and yet have believed. Those who believe what the word of God says, apart from what they see or feel with their physical senses, are the ones who are blessed. Let's look at Romans chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be careful. You get into them awful quick. Up here. You got about two or three Bibles with you. Uh, verses 17 through 21. We got it? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to read verses 17 through 21. Let's read it. Amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were, and even God, who calls those things, even God. I know you think you can call those things if you know it. The Bible says, even God, which calls those things that be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he also to Good God Almighty. Amen. Notice the difference between Abraham's faith and Thomas's faith. Mm -hmm. Thomas's faith was just simply a natural human faith. He said, I'm not going to believe unless I can see and feel. Mm -hmm. But the word of God says that Abraham believed God's word and he considered not his own body. Well, if Abraham didn't consider his own body, that means he didn't consider physical sight or physical feelings. Mm -hmm. What did he consider then? He considered the word of God. He considered the promise of God. Mm -hmm. We see it right there in Romans 4 and 21. Let's read it again. And, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, that what he had promised he was able also, he was able also to perform. Lord have mercy. Abraham was persuaded at a hundred years old that he could still pump out a baby. <laughs> Even though he was beyond the age and stage appropriate and believed for his wife. I know that's right. <laughs> who was on the other side of the fertile hill. You got it. <laughs> but she was able to receive. <laughs> Oh, glory. It ain't over, it ain't over old couples. <laughs> Trust in God and you can still. Amen. They didn't have no CBS pharmacies, no Walgreens. They didn't have them blue diamonds. <laughs> Amen. Them blue Skittles. No, they ain't trusted. <laughs> they ain't trusted God. Faith. Amen. Yeah. Said. The word of God says that Abram believed God's word and he didn't consider his own body. The writer says, I remember quite a few years ago, I was struggling along, the same, along some of the same lines that many people do today in the area of healing. Even after I was healed, I had some of the most alarming heart symptoms that seemed to return to me. In the nighttime, I would have some terrible struggles. So I just did what Abraham did. I had been praying and standing on the promises of God, but I could never get off to sleep. Finally, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I must have some relief. God spoke to me 
consider not thine own body. So I just relaxed and said, thank you, and took my mind off my body and drifted back to sleep. Later that same night, I woke up again and had some of the same symptoms. I said, Lord, I'm not considering my own body. What am I going to consider then? The Lord said, consider him who is the author and finisher of your faith. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the one who we consider. Amen. We got it? Hallelujah. Hebrews 3 and 1. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Amen. The partakers, the Bible yeah. even knew he was going to name us this name. Amen. Let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got it? Hallelujah. Let's read it together. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The author and finisher of our faith. Listen to this. Jesus is not required to finish what he did not author. So when we begin to ask for things that are not in his will, we are setting ourselves up for discouragement because misplaced expectations always lead to disappointment. If Jesus didn't say it, we ain't got no business believing it. Amen. 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 The author is the one who finishes. Amen. 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 God tells us in his word exactly what not to consider. And then he tells us what to consider. Mm -hmm. Or we could say it this way. God tells us in his word exactly what not to consider. And then he tells us whom to consider. The Lord Jesus Christ who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Amen. He says, immediately I got my mind on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Amen. He says, and I begin to consider him and what he has done for us. The Bible says, let's look back at Matthew 8 and 17. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your word. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Let's read it together. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. And so we are not called to co-bear, if that's even a word. He bear them, so we don't have to. He says, I begin to consider that scripture and to focus my mind and attention on Jesus and the word. And I stopped considering my body with its symptoms. Then I was able to drift off to sleep when I woke up, every symptom had gone. Hallelujah. Amen. Too many times, and we're all guilty, mm -hmm. we get our attention focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. When it comes to healing, we consider our own bodies and the symptoms that try to attack our bodies. Mm -hmm. That is what we are thinking about and looking at. And the more we look at the symptoms, mm -hmm. the worse we get. You hear people say, God hasn't heard my prayer yet, and I'm getting worse. That came out of your own mouth. And then you'll turn around and say, I feel better so much better. <laughs> he says, you will, he says, you better, I'm sorry, you heard people say God hasn't done. He says, I guess I'll wind up being operated on. People say this. You will as long as you travel that road of doubt and unbelief. He says, I preached in one church where there was a woman who testified every time she could. And at the end of every testimony, she would say, y'all pray for me. I just believe I've got cancer. Wow. <laughs> Finally, the pastor got tired of it. <laughs> and he stood up. He stood up when she got through and said, that's right, sister. Keep believing it and you'll get it. Jesus said, according to Matthew chapter 9, 
Verse 29. Hallelujah. You got to be careful what you confess over yourself. Amen. Let's see what the Bible says. You got Matthew chapter 9, verse 29? Yeah. Let's read it together. Amen. Then he touched her eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. You got to be very careful what you say. Are you hearing me? Sometimes folks say, the author says, Brother Hagen, pray for me. I believe I'm getting a cold. It won't do any good for me to pray for them because if they believe they are getting a cold, then they will get it because the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. You keep on believing for it and you'll get it. He says, you see, I'm trying to get you to see what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. So many people consider the wrong thing instead of considering God's promises to his word. We consider how we feel more than we consider what God has said. Lord Jesus. Okay. We consider how we feel more than we consider. So I got to feel better in order to confess better. I got to feel it before I confess it. Because if I ain't feeling it, I follow my feelings. And we know feelings are the worst leader Amen. you can follow. Amen? Amen. Some people, he says, uh, some people just get part of what I'm saying and go off thinking in an altogether different light than what he's teaching. They think I'm teaching that we are to deny all symptoms and just go on as if the symptoms weren't there. They think I'm teaching Christian science, but there is as much difference as daylight and dark in what I'm teaching and what the proponents of Christian science teaches. As one person said, this is not Christian science, this is Christian sense. <laughs> and maybe for the believer, we need to change our language. Amen. Instead of exercising common sense, Amen. let's exercise some Amen. Christian sense. <laughs> And again, I got allergies. <laughs> I ain't got no COVID. I'm healthy in Jesus' name from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Amen. Amen. Even when I sneeze. <laughs> we do not deny symptoms because the symptoms are real. Of course, pain is real. Sin is real. The devil is real. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Right. But notice what the Bible said. Let's look at Romans 4 and 19 again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 4 and 19. Type hallelujah. Say hallelujah if you got it. Let's read together. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's, he considered not his own body. So don't consider your body, but do consider Jesus, who is your high priest and the author and finisher of your faith, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let's read it again. When you got it, say hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus. I can stop right there and do a whole sermon series. Not my symptoms. Not how I feel, not what others are saying. Look unto Jesus. Y'all know Peter did that when he was drowning after Jesus had allowed him to walk on water. He took his eyes off, started going down, but before he went all the way down, he looked up to Jesus. <laughs> Lord, help me. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of consider not your body but look unto Jesus. Amen. Center your attention and your mind on what Jesus has done for you and what he is doing for you as your high priest. Jesus is doing something for you right now. Hallelujah. He's seated at the right hand of God Make an intercession for us. We see that in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. When you got it, say hallelujah. 
And Jesus, who neither slumbers or slip or sleep, doesn't need a time clock to punch in and out because he's always on time. Yeah. On time because he owns y'all in here Sunday. Yeah. He owns time. Yes, he does. Amen. We have it. Hebrews 7 and 25. Hallelujah. Let's read together. Wherefore, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever lieth to make intercession. He's at the right hand of God making intercession for us. But that's not all. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. We got it? I hear some pages turning on the conference call. Amen. I see some pages turning on Facebook Live. Let's read it together. We got it ready, set, read. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We would do Hebrews 4 and 14 no injustice by reading it this way. This is the reason we must hold fast to our confession. <laughs> because we have such a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. The Greek word is translated profession or confession implies that this verse can also be read, let us hold fast to saying the same thing. What does that mean? Jesus, our great high priest, is representing us at the throne of God. And Jesus is saying, I took their place, I died for them as their substitute. Jesus didn't die for himself, y'all. Amen. He didn't need to redeem himself because he wasn't lost. Amen. But he needed to die for us because we were lost. He became our substitute. He took our sins. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases. He died for us. And early Sunday morning, I just felt like doing it again with Jesus. He rose from the dead for us and descended on high for us. Jesus is at the right hand of the throne of God saying, I did all of that for them. I think when you make it personal, yeah, amen. you can develop a more deeper commitment to God. When you read the Bible and know what he went through just for you, you wouldn't feel insecure or unworthy because Jesus thought so much of you personally that he gave his life so that you can have eternal life. Thank you, God, for loving a no good sinner like me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being that good. Amen. That's right. Go on and tell him thank you. Amen. None of us are worth it. None of us deserve it. None of us. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Looking past my faults, my mess, my idiosyncrasy, my sins. When I fall short, you make up the difference. When I'm empty, you fill the void. When I'm low, you raise me up. When you're too high, you bring me down. He's the center of our joy. Thank you, Lord. Now, we are to, listen, hold fast to our profession. Meaning, we are saying the same thing here on the earth that the Word says. That's what puts the devil on the run. So get your attention focused on the right things, on Jesus, who is the great high priest, and on his word, instead of on yourself, your feelings, your senses, your situation, or your circumstance. You got to keep looking at the word. Amen. Says I like another passage of scripture along with this same, along this same line. He says, in fact, these scriptures helped me when I was on the bed of affliction. And I believe these scriptures helped me as much as anything in my lifetime. Proverbs chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Chapter 4, verse, what do I have? 20 through 28? 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 22. 
Let's read together. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are what is that? Oh, I forgot 22. I'm sorry. <laughs> For they are life unto those that bind them and health to all their flesh. He says, I want to call your attention particularly to one verse. Verse 21 says, let them, my words, not depart from before thine eyes. Many people fail because they see themselves fail. They keep the wrong thing before their eyes. This is helping me right now. Yes, yes. I'm feeling a conviction personally because the Lord has just revealed through that one scripture some things and some people uh -huh. that I've been keeping before my eyes mm -hmm. instead of him. Yes. 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 You know, we can spend so much time focusing on talking about our hurts that we never get healed. Yes. We can spend so much time talking about who hurt us. Yes. That we don't focus on the one who heals us. No, no. Thank you, Lord, for your conviction. I confess. I repent. Yes. In the name of Jesus, help me do better. Yes. Me too. I want to let it go, God. Yes. Help me. Lord. I want to see people like you see them. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Many people fail because they see themselves fail. He says, understanding this was a turning point in my life because up until the time I read this scripture, he says, I had always seen myself dead. Mm -hmm. I could picture every detail about my death. But after I read this passage of scripture, I could see myself well. And I began to see myself alive. Mm -hmm. I began to see myself doing things I had never done in my life because of my heart condition. I knew God had called me to preach, and I could see myself preaching. So I began to get ready for it. Even while I was bed fast, I asked for a tablet and a pencil, and I got my Bible and began to prepare sermons. They weren't preachable, and I never did preach any of them except one, but I was getting ready nevertheless. The reason many folks fail is that they get ready to fail. They see themselves failing. Mm -hmm. The reason many folk fail is that they get ready to fail. Mm -hmm. They see themselves failing. And they will talk themselves out of even trying before they get started. So true. Now notice again what the word says. Proverbs 4 and 21. Let's read it again. Let, Let them not, not depart from your eyes. eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy of thine hearts. If you know that God's word says himself if Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses according to Matthew 8 and 17 let's read that again. We gonna keep the word before our eyes. Amen. 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 Let's read it. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Look, it says, if you know God's word says himself took our infirmities, then if what the word does, I'm sorry, if that word does not depart before your eyes, you are bound to see yourself without sickness and without disease. Mm -hmm. There are things we can keep before our eyes till it literally becomes a part of us. Mm -hmm. I can promise you that your favorite movie, you can probably say every character's part from beginning to end because you've kept it before your eyes so much so mm -hmm. that you've literally internalized it. Yeah. Hey, just think if you did it with the word. Amen. Gotta keep it before you. Mm -hmm. If the word doesn't depart from before your eyes, you are bound to see yourself well. And if you do not see yourself without sickness and disease, and if you do not see yourself well, then that word has departed from before your eyes. And although God wants to make his word good in your life, he cannot because you're not acting on his word. Yes. He says, it's hard for me to follow the thinking of some people. To think that God is just going to do something for them without their doing what the word says 
It's just plain, unintelligent thinking. God isn't going to move on your behalf if you don't cooperate with his word. You see, God cannot move on your behalf, even if he wanted to, if you're not acting on the word. If he did, he would make himself out to be a liar, and the Bible says he cannot do that. He cannot lie. God gives us directions right here in Proverbs chapter 4 for taking his medicine. He says in Proverbs 4 and 22, let's look at it and read it. For they are like unto those that find them help to part of their flesh. To all their flesh. The margin of my Bible tells me that this Hebrew word translated help is also the word for medicine. So taking God's word according to his directions, God's words are medicine to all flesh. But verses 20 and 21 tells us the directions for taking the medicine. Let's go back and read it again. Verse 20 and 20. My son, my son attend, attend my words, incline thine ear to my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them so you get the prescription. You get the instructions. But you got to follow. It amazes me. Let me just throw this in for free, Regina. That any time we get a prescription from a doctor, we don't understand the words that are on the prescription. You can't read none of the writing, but the pharmacist can interpret it. And so we will take a piece of paper from a doctor with something written that we don't understand give it to a pharmacist that we don't know mm -hmm. and trust that they can interpret mm -hmm. and we will take it according to the instructions given. Mm -hmm. But we'll get the word plain and simple. Oh, that. Come on, in a language we can understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. In a way we can interpret. Yes. It from the only one yes. who is known as the healer. Yes. And we are doubted. Oh. oh my God. We'll go to the doctor. I know this ain't part of it. That's all right. The doctor tell us a stranger we don't even know. Yeah. Go in the room and take off all your clothes. <laughs> and we'll let them touch us everywhere they need to touch. And then pay them afterwards. <laughs> but won't let Jesus search us. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Divine, oh, good God Almighty. We got it. This is why we're being fed. Yes. This is why the word of God is feeding our faith even now. This is some good medicine, y'all. Yes, yes. <laughs> what is God's medicine? Does God have any medicine? Yes. Thank God he does. God's word is God's medicine. Again, for they, my words, are life unto those that find them and health or medicine to all their flesh. But in order for the medicine to work, it has to, this is so good, it has to be taken according to the directions given. In order for the medicine to work properly, it has to be taken according to the instructions that are given. Amen. Oftentimes we don't follow the directions as the uh, as the pharmacist has written. <laughs> we want to kind of do it our way. We yes. want to throw a little flesh into it yes. and end up messing up the whole pot of soup. Yes. You've got to do it the way the Lord said. It. Yes. Amen. Amen. Again, let's look at Proverbs 4 and 21. For the ways of man, oh, I'm sorry, we got to say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm getting happy and jumping all ahead of y'all. Amen. Amen. Let them, Let them not, depart not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. What is he talking about? My words. Keep looking at what the word says. You see, so many folk are looking at themselves, at the conditions, at the symptoms, and at their feelings. If God's word assures you that he heard and answered your prayers, then if that word doesn't depart from before your eyes, you are going to see yourself with what you prayed for. That's faith in God's word. When you see yourself with the answer based on God's word, that's when you know your faith is solidly based on the word of God. You see, failing to take God's medicine, his word according to the instructions 
is what defeats so many folk in their prayer life. Notice, all of that agrees with what Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got it? Let's read together. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. You've got to believe you've got your answer before you get it. Someone might say, I'm not getting, I'm, so, I'm not going to believe anything I can't see. But even in the natural realm, we believe a lot of things we can't see. Amen. We can't see this virus. <laughs> but it's keeping a lot of us. It's keeping a, amen. It's got us wearing masks, rubber gloves, staying apart from each other. Something we can't see. So don't tell me. Amen. That we can't. You got to see it first. No. He gives this example. He says, for example, during World War II, when radioactive materials were loosened to the atmosphere due to exploding bombs, the whole world became concerned about something they couldn't see. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. That they could not, you, can't, you, you cannot see or feel radioactivity, mm -hmm. but you can definitely see and feel the results of radioactivity. Mm -hmm. It's a destructive power. Also, scientists believe in many things they can't necessarily see, but just as people became alarmed about the unseen radioactivity in this world and believed it, even though they couldn't see or feel it, I believe in the power of God, even though I can't see or feel it. I believe what the word of God says about the Holy Ghost, the great unseen power of God, whether or not I feel or see him. Amen. Besides, I have had some of the greatest healings take place in my meetings when I never felt a thing. I've had some of the most marvelous things happen when the service seemed dead. I can feel you, preacher. Mm -hmm. So you see, feelings don't have a thing in this world to do with faith. Mm -hmm. God is with me. His power is always available whether I feel like it or not. I'm not basing my faith on what I feel. I'm basing my faith on what God said. And he said in Hebrews chapter 3, Chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. This is what God said. Amen. Amen. And I want to take a minute and just read this for somebody else. For somebody who's out there in this quarantine feeling all alone. I need you to read this. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. We got it? Amen. Let's read it together. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee. Nor forsake, nor forsake thee. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at Hebrews 13 and 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Is that what you're saying? The question is asked of us. Are you boldly declaring, The Lord is my helper? That's what you need to be saying. He says, well, someone said, the Lord's forsaken me. Y'all pray for me. I don't feel like I once did. Your feelings don't have anything whatsoever to do with what the Bible says. Amen. Says, I've heard people say, I've heard people say, thank you, Lord. Oh, I done lost my spot. I done got happy. I don't know whether I can make it or not. We've heard people say, I hope you can. Or I hope I can. Y'all pray for me that I'll hold out faithful to the end. Come on, we got people approaching us, exposing their lack of faith in so many ways. That is not what the word says we are to boldly declare. So many people are boldly declaring their defeat and failure. Anytime you've got to tell somebody what's wrong instead of what's right. Amen. You are declaring failure. Yeah. Anytime you talk about how you feel versus what God has already said, mm -hmm. you're already talking defeat. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yeah. 
They talk that so many people are boldly declaring their defeat and failure. I'm whipped. I'm defeated. The devil's got to be bound. This is what's popular. The devil is busy. But nowhere in the Bible do you find where he said to boldly say that. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 and 6. Let's, we already on that page. Yeah. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do. You better talk, Jesus. So quit saying the wrong thing and start saying the right thing. What is the right thing? The Lord is my helper. Right there in Hebrews 13 and 6. But you got to be convinced that he is. And so the question is asked, is he? I'm waiting on the answer. Yes. Y'all better type in the answer when I'm talking to you. Is he your helper? Yes. Then say that he is. Say that the Lord is your helper. Say according to Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 that he took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. I want you to read it for yourself once again so you can get this all down in your spirit. You got to say what the word says y'all. Matthew 8 and 17. Hallelujah. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Do you believe that? Amen. You got to say it then doggone it. That's what he said. Then you got to keep talking about God's delivering power. Say the right things and believe the right things and the right things will happen. He says, it is just simply wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong talking that whips folk. You see, the devil cannot defeat you because Jesus has already defeated the devil for you. Amen. Satan doesn't defeat you. You defeat yourself. Yeah. Or if he does, you permit him to do so. It's a consent of ignorance. Wow. God has given us his word to get our thinking straightened out so that we won't be ignorant and so our believing will be right. And if our thinking is right and if our believing is right, then our talking will be right and the manifestation of what we thought and said will come to pass. All right now. I just threw that in there. That's all right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. So say, the Lord is my helper. Yes. The Lord yes. is my strength. Yes. Real faith in the word says, if God says it so, then it's so. Amen. If God says by his stripe I was healed, guess what? I'm healed. And for those of y'all who need to read it again, who may have come to Bible study late, let's go to Isaiah 53, Amen. verses 4 and 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are almost at the end of this road, but not at the end of the lesson. Amen. 53, 4 and 5, let's read it. Surely. Hey, I can end right there. Amen. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Without doubt. That's right. Sure. Absolutely, positively. Sure. Amen. Surely. Surely. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. 1 Peter 2 and 24. Back to these healing scriptures. Amen. 1 Peter, you don't need to buy no special book of positive affirmations. You need some positive power. Holy Ghost page right here in the book. I can't make this up. First Peter 2 24 we got it. Hallelujah. Let's read together. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. If God says he shall supply every need of mine then he does it. Did he say it? Yes. Let's look at Philippians 4 and 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this may not look like your situation or feel like your situation, but it can become your situation. Amen. Amen. 
Philippians 4 and 19. But my God yeah, yeah, yeah. shall supply all your some of your need, all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, let's put it in proper context. Now, Paul was saying this. Now, this is going to sound like a little self-advertising. But Paul was saying this to the people who had blessed him as the preacher. Y'all want my cash out? <laughs> they were able to meet the physical needs of Paul while he was in, on house arrest. Amen? Amen? And so this was in response to them blessing the preacher. I know, I know, I, I, I can already feel it. Y'all just done shut out from the Bible study now because they say this preacher getting ready to hit me up for some dollars. No, no, if the Lord don't move on you to do it, don't do it. If you got to give it with a grudge, keep it in your pocket. God, you know, forsake me. He promised to meet all my needs. Amen. But I also bless my pastor. Yes, pastor blesses his pastor. He sows into his pastor. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. My cash app ain't run. <laughs> I just wanted in proper context because many of us are saying, but my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Remember, the prescription has to be taken, given to the, as, a, as it, uh, it should be taken according to the instructions given. You got to follow the directions. Don't just take part of it. But God said it. If he, if God says he can supply my need, he does. If God says he's the strength of my life, then he is. And he says it in Psalm 27 and 1. You got it? Well, y'all better than me because I ain't got it yet. Here I am. Psalm 27 and 1. Amen? Still ain't got it. Oh, here we go. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should, if God said it, I know I ain't supposed to holler in Bible study, but if he said it, we got to believe it. In other words, real faith in God simply says about one's self what the word says. So thank God I have what the word says I have. I am what the word says I am. If God says I'm strong, I am. If God says I'm healed, I am. If God says he cares for me, he does. So I just simply quietly rest on the word of God. For the word of God says in Hebrews 4 and 3. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And let me find that one too. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. Hallelujah. I'm right there with you. If you got to type in Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 and 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For we which have believed do enter into rest. So quietly rest on the word, regardless of natural evidence that will satisfy the physical senses. Real faith is built on the word of God. Amen. We should meditate in the word and dig deeply into it and feed upon it. Then the word. Somebody said then the word. Then the word. The word. Then the word will become a part of us just as natural food becomes a part of us. In other words, what natural food is to the physical man, the word of God is to the spiritual man. Amen. And going without the word in a week makes you weak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, amen. Yeah. So this word builds into me, the real me, the inward man. Mm -hmm. Confidence and assurance. Remember, Romans 10, 17. Y'all should know it by heart as much as we said last week. So then faith, so faith coming by, by hearing. And hearing by the word. Hearing by can't pray for it. Got to get in it. Got to, how can they hear? Help me, Regina. What? How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except? He sent. 
Y'all tell me y'all don't need no preacher. Y'all tune it in. <laughs> Listen, because y'all need a preacher. Amen. Amen. Preachers, don't y'all feel insecure about your calling? Amen. Preacher, don't y'all stop debating and defending and justifying. Let me talk to some women clergy. Because far too often, I see you putting yourselves down, feeling defeated because some sexist uh, preacher denied you an opportunity or says, if God called you, walk in the call. Amen. Stop going back trying to explain, creating further division in some cases about your calling. God is responsible for the fruit, baby. So them Negroes can say, oops. They don't folk can say all they want. But if God called you, you can silence them just by simply walking in the call. You don't have, I don't care what seminary you went to. You ain't got to go to the biggest, the best, and brightest. But you go the path the Lord has set for you. Amen. Be encouraged and you stay on the wall and you stay faithful to the call. And stop taking part in those worthless debates. Faith comes by hearing. Amen. Hearing by the word of God. Did this lesson bless anybody? Amen. Come on, come on. If it blessed you, just put in there, this lesson blessed me. And I'm about to test you because we're getting ready to answer a few questions. Amen. To make sure that y'all was listening. So do you have, we're going to go over our questions for study. Amen. Amen. And I pray that y'all got the right answers. Amen. Because we just went over the lesson. Amen. So you got your own cheat sheet. I don't hear nobody. Amen. And so let's answer the questions that have been given to us. Are we ready? ready? If you're ready, type, I'm ready. Okay, number one. Question number one, class. What does Hebrews 11 and 1 say that faith is? Faith is substance. What you say, Sister Glover? Faith. It's the substance. Type in your answers too if you're watching via Facebook. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So, number two, what kind of faith is God talking about in Hebrews 11 and 1? A scriptural faith. Amen. Scriptural faith. Bible faith. Y'all doing good. Amen. Okay, number three is to fill in the blank. I'm going to read it, then we're going to answer it. Bible faith is laying hold of the blank, realm of blank, and bringing it into the realm of blank. Bible faith is laying hold of the unseen. Hey! Of the unseen realm of and bringing it into the realm of reality. Come on, y'all. Uh, A so far. Y'all doing good. Number four. Mm -hmm. Faith is blank God's word by blank on it. Got it? Mm -hmm. Faith is proving God's word by acting on it. Come on, y'all. I don't see nobody typing no... Uh, Oh, thank you, Sister Mary. I see you typing in some answers. Y'all better type in some answers to let me know y'all paid attention. I have y'all do it all over again. What did John Wesley call a substitute for faith that looks and sounds so much like faith? Many people cannot tell the difference. He called it mental assent. He called it mental assent. Great job, y'all. Put the answer in. Number six, how can you tell whether you have faith in your heart or whether you're just believing mentally in your head? You can tell because mental agreement or mental assent says, I know God's word is true. Mental assent says, I know God's word is true, but I can't get it. Heart faith says, I have it, even though I cannot see it. I'll say it again. Mental assent says, I know God's word. I know God's word is true, but I cannot get it. However, heart faith says, I have it, even though I cannot see it. 
fill in the blanks, y'all, because you're going to go back and study it later. Or either y'all just look at the video again later, because it'll be up. Amen. What does God, I'm sorry, when does what we are believing God for materializes? When we believe God's word without seeing anything manifested in the natural realm. What you and said? What we are believing God for. Some of y'all took y'all test ahead of time, didn't you? <laughs> When, when does it say? When we believe God's word without seeing anything manifested in the natural realm. Y'all are good. Perfect score so far. What is the difference between Thomas's faith and Abraham's faith? Thomas's faith was simply was just a natural human faith. Abraham believed God's word and considered not only his own body, but considered the word of God. <laughs> you always got that one classroom show off. He just got out. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> hey, hey man, you got the right answer. Thomas's faith was natural human faith. Abraham believed God's word and considered not his own body nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. There's a difference. Number nine, what should you center your attention and your mind on? God's word. Amen. You believe on what Jesus has done for you and what he is doing for you as your high priest. Y'all said it. God's word. Center your attention and mind on what Jesus has already said and done in his word. Number 10. Similar answer. What is God's medicine? God's word. Hallelujah. Give yourselves a hand. Great job. Great job. You all did a fantastic job. We thank and praise God for you all spending this time with us to grow in our faith through the word of God. We pray that this lesson blessed you. And if the Lord has moved upon your heart to sow a seed into this ministry, there are two ways you can do it online. You can go to Givelify and look up Park Takers Church Baptist of Detroit. Hit that donate button. Give whatever amount the Lord places on your heart. You can also give via Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, at, and you can go to pcb.trustee at gmail.com. Or you can mail it to 2550 South Lindsdale Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48217. We thank and praise God for you. If you have any prayer requests, we ask that you would type in the prayer request, the names we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to take this moment to receive our offerings. If you want to send a gift to your boy, y'all just heard the scripture. I may as well go on and put it out there, because some of y'all probably want to do it. But if you don't, that's cool. My bill still got paid through the month, so I'm grateful to God. But you can cash out at Lee Winfrey Sr. L-E. Look, I got to look up to spell my own name. Dollar sign L-E-E. -E. W-I-N-F-R-E-Y-S-R. -E Only if the Lord moves upon them. Amen. Amen. And he will supply all. <laughs> Amen. If you have prayer requests, we ask that you would put them in now. We are praying, and we're going to do all this while we're online because we want to make sure we get everybody's uh, prayer requests. If there's someone, if you're on the conference call and there's someone you'd like us to pray for, uh, even though it may sound like you're talking over one another, we believe that God hears our cry. Amen. So we would ask that you would call out those names. If you are on uh, Facebook Live, type the names in the um, comment section or what you desire prayer for, and we will close out together uh, in prayer. We are lifting up Mother Glenda Williams and the loss of her brother, LaRue Ramsey, uh, Jerry Brown, the loss of her niece, Tedra. Uh, the family of Sister Shirley Robinson, Lovey Marshall, Pat Benning, Starla Williamson, family of Brother Derek Buford, the family of Sister Annette Lee, Sister Lavini and Brother Cleveland Williams, Sister LaVon Roberson, Brother Edwin Parker, Mother Vera Travis, the entire Golden Girls Mother's Ministry, Brother James Payne, Brother James Saddlewhite. We always ask for a prayer for uh, myself and Lady Kim. Uh, we're praying for you and your situation. If there's another name you want us to consider, just type in the name and we'll begin to pray 
Uh, as a matter of fact, right now, as we all come into agreement, whether you're online, whether you're on the conference call, whether you're here in the room, we are touching and agreeing right now as we go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this Bible study lesson. Yes, Lord. Yes. We thank you, God, for making your word available to us, recognizing that the word is useless unless we act upon it. Yes. Thank you that our faith in some cases have been restored, our faith in other cases have been renewed and developed, strengthened. We thank you, God, that you are building us up in our most holy faith and that you're allowing us to get to that place where we can believe it has happened before it actually happens. We pray that you will change our lives through changing our language and allowing it to parallel your word because we know God that our mental faith is not sufficient that it has to come from our heart and God we thank you that our spirit man has been fed and strengthened through this lesson you've made available to us we thank you for everyone who's on Facebook live everyone who's on the conference call everyone who will see or hear this message everyone here who's with us to you be all the glory and God we Lift up all of the names that have been called out, yes. that are being typed in, yes. and we ask in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus that you would touch where a touch is needed, yes. heal where healing is needed, yes. deliver where deliverance is needed, yes. help where help is needed, yes. strengthen where strength is needed, yes. and God, that you would save where salvation is needed. God, if there's someone who's watching or on this line that has not received your son, Jesus, as Savior and Lord, yes. we pray, God, yes. that they would repent of their sins, yes. that they would believe in their hearts and confess with their mouths that Jesus died and that God raised him from the dead. Yes. And God, we pray that they would take their newly discovered foundation and connect with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching, Bible-living church. Yes. Not a perfect church but a church that you've called and ordained and that you've placed in this earth to get the message of your son out to the masses. We lift up every preacher, pastor, and proclaimer. We lift up every church. We just lift up the world. You know us intimately, individually and collectively. And so God, as we commend our total lives to thee, knowing that you're able to still do exceeding abundantly and above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's at work in us, And then, God, we thank you for the gifts that have been received. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would take these gifts and multiply these gifts and that they be used for your kingdom and to your glory. Then over and above the amount, bless the heart of the giver is our prayer. And God, as we prepare to leave this place, this broadcast, this conference, but never your presence. Continue to be with us, lead God, and direct us until we meet again. It's in that marvelous, matchless name of Jesus Christ, whose name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, Amen. 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 and amen. 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 God bless you. We praise God. We thank God for you. And we will.